Hey everyone, my name is SimC, how you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Rome 2, DEI Divide et Impera. Here today on the channel, we're back with episode 14 of our Indian Morian series. Alrighty, here today we're going to be wrapping up the official conquest of Macedonia, and we're going to be making plans and preparations to declare war upon the Greek city-states. We're going to be marching into Larissa, marching into Athens, and then eventually Sparta. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I really much appreciate it. Alrighty, we're under the reign of Ashoka, our second faction leader. We've lost a good amount of family members by being quite aggressive <laughs> with our elephant riders. And I just think because we're just facing so many skirmisher factions, they tend to take them out quite a bit. Uh, Bindasara, our original faction leader, was actually taken out pretty early on. So at the moment, politically, we're in an interesting situation. If Ashoka was to fall now, it, there definitely would be a massive power vacuum. Most of the generals that had huge swaths of influence have now, well passed away and uh, no longer with us but overall we're quite stable as a kingdom at the moment but uh, let's see how we go here today okay so it's end the turn to continue we marched over with six full stacks now we've probably only got two operational I would say if we're being honest okay so we're gonna have to restructure Pella rebuild it from the ground up it's 256 BC, we're 100 turns into this particular campaign, and now we're so far west, we can't replenish and repair our Indian warriors, our Persian warriors, or Arabian, so we're going to have to dive into the local Greek manpower pool, we're going to get some Thessalian hoplites here, uh, maybe even some Pergamon, just whatever we can get, basically. We now border the Romans and the Illyrians. Uh, Buildings-wise, this is what we currently have. We're not fo so much focusing on trade, which in nearly all my DEI campaigns I would, but because we can't trade through the Mediterranean because our capital is cut off and blocked, we're focusing on internal agriculture and essentially anything from mining or an industrial base. So we're going to move everything to Pella here now, and basically just try and rally up, give Ashoka the best army we can. Okay, so I've got so many ships down here, down in the Red Sea, and we simply just don't need that much. We are in a little bit of a financial situation, an issue you could say, so there's no point in having that big of a navy there. And it will allow us to get a bigger navy in Pella. So I want to try and restructure my army. Uh, we do have an army in the a navy in the Black Sea. I don't know if we necessarily need it. We'll, we'll just have to see. So at the moment now, we're just going to do some recruitment and repair. And then we'll push down against Athens. So there is a full stack sitting around there. They were a vassal state of the Macedonians. I do have an army in the north. And we'll try and swing more down and around here. But at the moment, replenishing our ranks with ethnic Greeks, Greeks probably wouldn't be too bad either, to be honest. But we've taken Pella. We've completed our short victory of Hindu-fying the Middle East. And now we've hit our long victory condition of dealing with the Macedonians and destroying them, who put up a massive fight. If you haven't gone and watched the last couple of episodes, highly recommend you do. They have been our main and hardest adversary in this series. Although they only came with three full stacks, we came with six. This is the remnants of it. We won, but we lost nearly 10,000 troops in the process. They had a fantastic army roster and a couple of fantastic battles against me. They just got me, but we just took more territory. Okay, so 255 BC, skipped a little bit ahead now as the armies are ready to get some action. So for all intents and purposes, we've pretty much won the campaign. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a war with the Romans. But I think what we'll do now is we'll go against Athens here today. Have that battle, that'll be fun, facing their units. And we'll probably fight Sparta as well because they're quite a cool faction to go against. Okay, so the Romans are at war with Larissa and the Achaeans there. So, can I negotiate? Yes, I will join your war, Romans. I will pay you to... No. Demand. How about the other way around? No. Okay. How about this time we offer? No, okay. Well, they just told me to bugger off. I get the message. All right. So, yeah. So the Greeks in Larissa 
don't seem to be overly too strong. I'm going to call my Parthian and Persian allies, as always, because there is sometimes an opportunity for them to break. It actually wouldn't be bad for me to do so, because then we can have an excuse to, well, go after them, I suppose. We'll swing in all these armies now that have been replenished and repaired, and I can't see us really having that difficult of a fight. So let's go with Ashoka, who now, his infantry is most like uh, is mostly made up of hoplites and Greek pikes, which is cool. All right, let's auto resolve this one. Clear cut victory. Only half a stack outside, and then the garrison making up the numbers. So Larissa will fall, and that will secure us the breadbasket of Greece. So I do quite like to build a grain pit or a, um, a massive farm there. We've also got access to olive oil as well, which I believe this is the first of the series. There might be, no, we've got marble. There might be some in Asia Minor, but I think the majority is going to come from here. But at the end of the day, remember, we can't trade it. <laughs> Only to some factions that border us, like Parthia and Persia. So I guess we do have some trade rights, but limited. Okay, so we've got a 12% risk here of revolt. And who particularly is it? It's this court. Okay, so we're going to secure the loyalty of them. Yeah, 300, 288, 140. It's because Ashoka basically holds all the power. We do control, what, 8 out of the 10 seats. And the green nobles hold more rather than the blue. So... Let's do this political intrigue. That'll get us off, a, off their back for a little bit. We probably need to purge the other parties. Okay, so... Larissa's now been defeated. I think it's time to officially go to war with Athens. Now, unfortunately, they're not at war with anyone. I guess they're technically independent now because... Well, Macedon has been destroyed. We'll call the Arab, Persian, and Parthian alliance. They're going to come with us. And there's a full stack here of Athenians. These armies are a little bit weak. And there's a full stack here in the north as well. That still hasn't moved south. I don't know why they were continuing to sit up there. But regardless, let's move down. And let's get this army to besiege Athens. It would win anyway in an auto-resolve. That's insane. Okay, let's move you here. And let's get Ashoka to surround this Athenian army. Now, it shouldn't bounce too far. Okay, so it is going to bounce there. But because we're blocking it... The, sea, the settlement, we're going to be able to just focus on that army. So, okay, so they're all going to come in. Perfect. This is exactly what we want. So this should be a better fight. So we're bringing 10,000 against their 3,400. Let's fight this one upon the battlefield. Let's -a go. Here we go. The Battle of Athens, 255. This is a crazy looking battle map. But here we go. Macedonian pikes now loyal and have bent the knee to the Mauryan Empire. And we've also got some Thessalian hoplites there as well. We do have some mercenary barbarians coming with us. Syrian archers. Most of the ethnic Indian units are now the general's bodyguard, the cavalry, and potentially really just the archers. But here are the last few members of Greek democracy, the wise owl of Athens. Let's take this Athenian city. And I don't know. Who would. So Athena is the god of Athens. Who should take it in her place? I'm sure there's some cool Indian god we can name it to. Alright, so, we are just going to move my infantry up here, make it a little bit nicer. There's a massive slope on that right-hand side, so we will have to be a little bit careful in our approach. But, overall, just wait until we get overwhelming force, and then we'll march on in. Now, unfortunately for them, if they had probably that full stack in the south, it would have been a little bit different, but it's not to be. Let's advance with my archers as well. And let's continue on. Once Athens falls, 
Sparta is next on the chopping block. But now moving westward. Rome is having an interesting campaign. 100 turns in. They don't have Illyria fully under their control. They do control Epirus. And a small province there. They don't have Cisalpine Gaul. Maybe they're doing better in North Africa and against Carthage. Who knows? Alright. Let's speed things up slightly. 14,000 or so man battle. Here we go. India versus Athens. We've crushed so many ethnic Greek states. Bactria, the Seleucids, Pergamon, Cameria, Anatolia, Macedon, and now soon to be Athens. Let's rally up. Move my cavalry on the left hand side. And let's advance. Try and at least put three, four units on the sides, not matching it exactly. You have a tendency in Total War line battles, like, I don't know what it is. I guess it's like s symmetrically. Like, you just want to line up your army with theirs. But it's actually not advantageous to do so. If you've got two, three spare units on the left and right corners of your front line, you're better off overlapping them and then flanking and running around. We do have to be a little bit careful on that right hand side, uh, simply because there is a slope and we don't want to get caught too far down there. So let's move on up. We do have numerical supremacy with 40 units. We're going to have another 20 as additional reinforcements. So we'll take our time. We do have some Indian heavy infantry here, but we only can recruit them from our Far Eastern territories now. So it's at a point where it just takes so long to move over here. It's really just not worth it. Rotating them in. But here are our Hellenic units. Essentially mercenaries now. Looking to fight for dictator god emperor of the east Ashoka. The Greeks feared Xerxes of the east. Now they should fear Ashoka, <laughs> who's carved a massive empire. He's definitely fulfilled his father's ambition, who was a crucial part in basically setting up how well this campaign has done. That Arabian conquest was a part of his design. And... The southern Persian. Okay, so a little bit of skirmishing is coming out. The Athenians are trying to push my right hand side. And our ethnic Indian archers are getting their shots off. Make sure we're in a formation. I'm going to be a little bit cautious with my three generals because we need to try and rank them up a bit. It's probably because while we're like nearly teetering on revolts. A lot of the Indian court probably want to break away. <laughs> Honestly, it'd nearly be advantageous to nearly partition the Mauryan Empire at this point. The um, empire that's in Europe, essentially, and Asia, or the Middle East, rather than India itself, to generals. Because, <laughs> like, at the moment, I guess it's pretty secular, this nation of ours. It'd just be so hard, because it's such a hodgepodge of different cultures already. Maybe we can take something from the Ottomans. Ironically, we do have a lot of Ottoman future territory. Okay, so let's move here. But the horse lords at the moment, the Turks are hanging out in the steps at this point in time. Alright, let's give out some attack orders here, and we'll try and wrap around and get these Athenian dogs. Okay, let's go for this. Make sure we focus on the general unit, and then we'll be laughing. Okay, lock them down. Ammunition. 
Okay. And then we'll try and neutralize that full stack in the north that's teetering on pillar. Okay. And then, yeah, I can't really imagine any Greeks coming after us now. Camaria is still a nation, but I don't think they're going to attack us. Because that was a faction we were at war with that was Greek. Um, haven't heard much of Ptolemy. Don't know what he's doing. I think he's too busy for focusing on the Kingdom of Kush. And the Arabs and Persians down there. Because we completely bypassed that. We never pushed into Ptolemy Egypt. I suppose we saved some time. Because we're getting to what I really wanted to see in this particular series. I knew it would take a couple weeks to do. And just a couple tens of hours of gameplay. Finally, push west and have Indian units fighting ethnic Greeks. That's what we wanted to see. Nice. It's in the battle there. Just going to spend a couple more minutes running them down. Perfect. We only lost 436. <laughs> Crikey. Syrian Arch is doing really well. But we've just absolutely decimated their army there. Ashoka notching up another glorious victory. Excellent stuff. He really is the God Emperor incarnate now. <laughs> Alright, let's enslave there. And then we're going to push into Athens itself. It was already a decent order resolve before we moved up Ashoka. We're going to trespass into Sparta territory now. There really should be a thing where we're going for that army. Will allow us to request that because it just hurts our diplomacy. In doing so. Alright, so... Looks like we're going to get another clear-cut victory against a garrison. We're going to take that. And occupy Athens. Now that army that's in the north is going to start rotting away. Let's go with a eastern library. Let's convert the fantastic um, educational libraries in Athens. The universities, the intellectual hubs into eastern, I suppose. A merging of east and west theology. Okay, so... Let's move south here. So we've got access to Athenian and Corinth Corinthian hoplites, which is nice. So what's that now? Oh my god, we're just going to crush this. <laughs> Nearly 10,000 there. Alright, let's finish off the last of the Athenians here. No need to play that one. Not a difficult fight. And it'd just be a repeat of that battle. And Athens, as a faction and a nation, has been destroyed. And all that remains on the Greek peninsula is Sparta now. And I guess a little bit of the Romans in, in um, Epirus. Alright, well, unfortunately that note, it's time to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed episode 15, uh, 14, sorry. Stay tuned for episode 15 coming out tomorrow. We're going to be dealing with the Spartans and hopefully bringing them under Indian rule. So like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. My name has been Simsi. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.